Southeast Oklahoma was known as Indian Territory till 1907. It was home of a lot of renegades, Bell Starr, Jesse James, Marlowe Brothers. It was also home to the Kimichi Beast, who is said to have terrorized the area for over 200 years. I'm Master Yuz, and this expedition is for the Kiamichi Beast. Now, for more than 150 years, the Indians claimed that the Kiamichi Beast used to raid their camp and take their children. Now, the locals claim the Kiamichi Beast still roams those hills. It's a rough and rugged area. Many of the locals claim when they find a dead deer or hog and the liver's missing, it's the Kiamichi Beast that did it. Many of the locals are afraid to go out at night. They're afraid of the Kimichi Beast. Well, we're going on an expedition to locate the Kimichi Beast. Any evidence that is found will be evidence that is found during this expedition, and it is real. Travel with me. Let's see if we can find the Kimichi Beast. Keep them short. Our journey to find the Kiamichi Beast starts up in the Kiamichi Mountains of Oklahoma. A lonely, quiet, desolate place. Travel deep into the mountains by rugged road. Where we were going, you wouldn't see anybody else. was an experienced woodsman. He had gone on several expeditions into Canada looking for Bigfoot, up there called Sasquatch. I would need his experience in tracking ability. It was a long, hard trip. We had to go by foot for many, many miles to reach our destination. My partner thought he heard something up on the mountain ridge. A rock had come tumbling down. We knew we were being watched. He looked carefully, carefully for footprints, tracks, signs, stacked rocks, anything that would give an indication about who or what had been there. We quietly moved through the woods to our destination lonely, quiet. We knew we were alone. 
just us and the Kiyomichi beast. As we moved through the valley, I kept thinking I saw something up on the ridge. I couldn't tell what it was, though. We took time to set up a base camp. We would have to travel in and out as we needed food and supplies. Down into the valley I went, looking for tracks, sign, sound. I could feel it. I knew he was there. As was common on the mountain, fogs often come up quickly appear out of nowhere. We had to move carefully as we looked around. It's easy to walk off a ridge when you're up on top of the mountain. As it cleared, I moved into a small valley. Spooky, it was really, really spooky. I could feel something watching me. I'm occasionally finding humps of rock like this in places where it really shouldn't be. So I'm not sure what the significance is, but it'll be just a pile of rocks in a circular fashion. Back at camp, we rested and prepared for our first night at camp. We would be alone in the woods, just us and the Kiyomichi beast. We couldn't move around much at night. With the cliffs, it's easy to take a fall when it gets dark. We set up a campfire and tried to enjoy the evening. Morning came, breakfast. <coughs> And my first thought, what would I do? Where would I find a Kiyomichi beast? Now, I don't think there's any question Bigfoot is nocturnal. He's quite often seen late in the evening, early in the morning, and there's been plenty of stories about Bigfoot coming up to a campsite at night and uh, somebody seeing because of the flickering light. He seems to like to watch the campfire and see what's going on. He doesn't like anybody to know he's there. Quite often you won't know he's there. Be right beside you in the dark and you won't know he's there. But there's no doubt he's nocturnal. So we're having to move our search around that by trying to spend more time in the early mornings and dawn and more time at dusk. It's hard to search at night up here because of the uh, ledges. It's a good way to have a bad accident stepping off into a steep cliff or a hole. So it's pretty dangerous and pretty much limits the nighttime search. We are setting up cameras. We're taking pictures, setting for long periods of time over little valleys from the ridge and filming, doing everything we can to catch any movement we can. The problem is nobody actually knows where the Bigfoot returns to a particular spot to sleep or he just sleeps wherever he is for the night. Nobody really knows. Nobody's actually found a sleeping Bigfoot 
in a cave anywhere. There are no such pictures. And so there's a very, very good chance he sleeps wherever he is. But I tend to think, since he's walking the same trails, I tend to think that in case of really severe weather, he does have a place that he can go to to stay protected. Well, we're going to stay on it. We've still got quite a few days here. The weather's looking real bad. Been raining quite a bit. It's making it hard. We're going to stay after it. <laughs> Uh, when I went and spoke to my parents that evening, they tried to tell me I was seeing things, and I took them back with flashlights, showed them the branch, showed them the footprints, showed them the hair where he had brushed up against the tree, and there was strands of hair, obviously not human, obviously not bare. They could still smell the smell because it was lingering even 15 minutes later. Right there, we have a trail that goes right up that side of the steep hill and disappears up into the rocks. Mm -hmm. Something big and heavy is traveling up that. Now, I've been going to these wilderness areas for around 40 years, maybe more than 40 years now. And whether you believe in Bigfoot or not, it depends on you. I can tell you one thing. A lot of these shows you see about Bigfoot, they're all just creative shows. They're all for amusement. There's very little truth in them. The fact is, it's very rare to see a Bigfoot. It's very rare to find legitimate footprints. It's very rare to even actually even get close to a Bigfoot. They have the ability to hear sounds that me and you can't hear. Uh, ultrasonic sounds, low sounds. They can hear the click of a camera 300 yards away because of their hearing. You gotta understand this is a creature that has lived for tens of thousands of years in the wild. And they have highly developed senses to protect themselves. And getting close to them is actually very, very rare. Now, a lot of people say, well, a deer's got those senses and a wild hog has those senses. That may be true, but the difference is this. Bigfoot is a highly intelligent creature. You add those skills, those natural senses, to a highly intelligent creature, and you have something that is just about impossible to find. Can you find evidence? Yes, you can. The evidence is small. It's, it's hard to find things. He doesn't leave much evidence. In fact, a Bigfoot will walk through a marsh because he knows he can't be tracked. That's why you can't find a lot of footprints from a Bigfoot around the waterway. They'll use the water and walk in the water. They're highly intelligent. And if you get close to a Bigfoot, usually it's because he wanted to be close to you. And all these people that are running up to the wilderness areas and they're carrying guns, you can't get within a mile of a Bigfoot for firearm. He can smell the powder a mile away. That's how strong his senses are. And so, are they there? That's up to you. Can you interpret the evidence? But the evidence is there. It's a beautiful place. Clear water, food, also rugged terrain. Night came again.
I'm Dick Inman, and I'm part of this expedition for Bigfoot here in Arkansas. And we are looking for the big one. And this is some tough territory up here, I'm going to tell you. I've been here a couple different times, but not in this park. This, this territory is rough. I've been to Canada a couple times on expeditions, and it's rough up there too. Big hills, a lot of water, fast moving, like it is here. But these rocks are different than Canada. These things here are... You gotta watch yourself walking. You break an ankle real quick. Canada's nice. It's wide open. It's got a lot of tracks up there. So uh, pretty good evidence of a Bigfoot up there. We call them Sasquatch. Uh, here we've got Bigfoot. We have seen some signs in the last couple of days. But we're pretty sure that this is the kind of territory that he's in. You can see that this is pretty good territory. Pretty rough. Rough and wild. If you weren't a big man or a big animal, you couldn't get around in this stuff. Uh, I have a hard time getting through here. It's rough for me. Slip and slide on these rocks. It's a lot of fun. We found some bone here the other day on a creek. Uh, Deer track. There sure are some strange sounding birds up in here. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I don't know what they are. Why is it even burning? We knew Bigfoot was there. We knew the Kiamichi beast would not let us down. He would show sooner or later.
water to drink. The Kimichi beast is big. It takes a lot of water and a lot of food for him. Just a one weird looking piece of rock and it's heavy like iron. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's not like a rock. It's heavy like iron. It's iron. Let me zoom in and get a, a close up of it. And turn it around real slow. It looks like some kind of fossil encased in it to me. Yeah, it's all kinds of... It's a strange looking piece with these ribs in here like this too. Look like shell. Like a shell or something, or maybe a spine, a backbone. That being up in these uh, mountains could be over a million years old. It could be. But you can see the thickness of it from here. It was broke off and it expands all the way down, clear down underneath to here. It's certainly unusual. All the way through it. I and a friend had decided to go look at a historical cemetery down near Honabia, Oklahoma. It's in south. It's very heavily wooded. There is nothing out there. You're out near the wilderness area. And uh, we came down the road and pulled up to the cemetery. We were at the very front of the cemetery near the gate. It, it, it doesn't, you can't drive through the cemetery. You have to stop at the front and walk it. And so as we got out of the car, at the northeast corner of the cemetery in the back, along the wooded edge, and it's heavily, heavily wooded, I saw Bigfoot. And he was moving up the back of the cemetery along the tree line, and he moved to the south corner and that's when he disappeared into the tree line. And uh, I would say he was about eight foot two tall. And I would, I could only guess maybe 600 pounds. And he was dark brown, but it was sort of modern. And I, I could, he was close enough. He was only about 45 yards away. He was close enough. I could see some of the features on his face. But that is the first time I've ever seen Bigfoot. I started searching the ridges, moving quietly. The only thing I could hear was the birds and the bees. I knew he had to be close. The crow was telling off on him. I have located several more artifacts. This is a very, very large tooth. And this almost looks like a petrified thumb. We continually find these tiny artifacts that are giving us more and more clues about where Bigfoot could be actually uh, making camp when he stops. And I have found a crystal. It's way too big to be human. Uh, it appears, when I look at it under a microscope that I carry into the field, it appears to have dermal ridges on it. Also, in areas that I'm finding evidence of Bigfoot, I'm finding unusual crystals. This crystal shows in a unique color pattern. Uh, it not only shows the light spectrum, it seems to show a frequency of light, which is very, very unusual, and I'm finding these all around where I find evidence of Bigfoot. As I traveled down the ridge, Vic would walk parallel to me through the valley. 
the creeks were always between the little valley and the ridge. Like I said, we've been finding trail markers totally down the ridge, leading from one state to the next state. It's not unusual for the trail markers to have a double marker when it comes down to a spot like this where there's a waterfall or large stream. There could be significance in that, that it's marking places to feed and, and get water as they travel across the mountain ridge. The first day we searched all day in the valley, preparing to check the ridges. Beautiful place. I have just seen movement on top of the rocks. We're gonna to try to zoom in and see what was up there. It briefly appeared and disappeared. It is gone. Another lonely, quiet night. Down left, yeah. Sound like a tornado coming over the head. You can get worse. Like you call him Bigfoot. Again, as morning came, we started through the valleys. I would head towards the ridge. Vic again would walk parallel to me.
This year it was unusual. Usually it's dry by now. There had been a lot of rain recently. The creeks were just full. The waterfalls were pouring. This was going to make it harder because it would be easy for Bigfoot to get water. He wouldn't have to travel far. Usually at this time, the creeks already dried up. But this year, there was plenty of access to water. More than even Bigfoot could drink. Watchtar River. You got to kip the ridge here. Yeah. We've already covered this this ridge right in here. Yeah. We've got 30 more miles of ridge to go. Alright. All the trail markers we're finding have been here, 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 here along the ridge. And the minor markers are coming down to where the waterfalls were, so we know he's traveling this way. Yeah. The question is, is this cold weather going to put him lower on the ridge or keep him on well, top? I don't know. It was colder than heck last night. Yeah, cold and windy. I That's why I'm thinking cold. he may drop down about 100 feet he below might. the ridge. Because when we were down in that, on that lower end, it was pretty nice down there. Yeah. And he's, even Bigfoot's not going to stay on top of that ridge when it's thundering. No. He's going to want some shelter to get away from that wind. Little thin gap. We've been there, right? So we're going down this. We're first coming down through here, right? All the way out here, 25 down. Yeah, we can start today's search about here. Okay. And Lost. try to complete about here this evening. Yeah. I believe you're right. There's a rebound coming out of us. Well, we'll be down here. Think about that lost mountain. Well, that's where it's heading. Yeah, that's where it seems like he's going through. That's where the creek is. There's a mine. I think we're catching up. Well, let's start our plan there today. Yeah, let's do it. Go ahead and get your pack. been a week we had not seen a living soul we were alone up in the mountains just us and the Kimichi beast but it wasn't going to be easy as you can see we're in the middle of nowhere about the waterfalls and the way the trails run across the mountain ridges. The waterfalls have deeper pools of water. There are bigger fish there and there are more fish there even through the late summer. That could be why there are markers often on the trail line that lead down to the waterfalls and the pools of water. I hope you can hear me. The uh, 
fall is going pretty heavily this morning. Last night there was a big flood. We've got everything wet. All the equipment wet, sleeping bags wet, tent wet. We made it through the night. This may change the ball game hunting for Bigfoot. It's going to be easier for him to get access to water so he won't have to come down to the streams as much uh, for his water needs. It may also change the flow of animals that he may feed on, the trafficking of the animals as they move through the forest now to avoid the flood, flooded stream. Now last night I brought my laptop and some audio equipment and we recorded for the first time ever the howl of the Kiyomichi beast. Now what makes this so unusual is the howl of the Kiyomichi beast is the only one like it ever heard. It's actually a long lonely wail and I'm going to show you here a copy of the spectrograph and the strange thing, or the, uh, the astounding thing, actually, is that the howl goes from zero up to 8,000 hertz. It's astounding. And so you'll see some spots. You'll hear some other animals on the audio spectrograph analysis. And then you're going to hear at first a short wail. And then about 15 seconds go by for other animals. And then you'll hear a longer wail of the Kiyomichi beast. It's really astounding, it's the only known recording. carefully searched creek beds. That's a good place to find evidence. No tracks, but bones. Bones from somebody's dinner. And why can't you see them? And if you get out here in this terrain, you'll find out why you can't see them. We've been out here during their week now, and we haven't even seen but one bear track. Can't even find the bears out here. Hey, one coon drive us crazy on the trail. Other than that, there's, the animals are probably scarce out here. It is so rough, so covered up, so much foliage. But the waters and the streams are pretty, pretty clear. I think the, a lot of animals come down here in forage, drink, eat crabs, crawdads, a little bit of fish. There's a lot of fish to be had. Uh, nice territory. We've seen some sign, and we're going to keep going until we see some more.
Well, at least we had a beautiful moon to look at. As I moved through the brush, I kept hearing something that was moving around me. I couldn't see a thing though. Dark, cold, and quiet. That's really strange. I never had a new temp break like that. Yeah, I never had either. No, I bet it was a flaw. Take it back. Get your money back. Well, Too I've had it anyway. for a year. I didn't use it. Oh, really? Is that yeah. that long? In fact, the store I bought it at, they closed down. Gander, Morton, Gander Mountain shut down all their stores. No shit. I heard that clear up in Michigan. Yeah, I think they so. They didn't say if that was true. They didn't know. Gander Mountain closed the store. Yeah. What about Bass Pro? We don't we don't have one up there where I am. Oh, we don't? Okay. Wonder what happened. They just went broke? I hear so, yeah. As dawn came again, we were finding more and more signs of Bigfoot. Bones, bones buried deep in the rocks alongside the stream. They were too big to be human. I crossed over the ridge trying to get a sight. Even though I was fairly high up, the brush was so thick you couldn't see anything. I thought I saw something moving among the rocks. I couldn't tell if it was a bear or if it was a Kiamichi beast. Enchanting there, beautiful, almost like being in a mystical place.
I decided to check the game cameras. Nothing unusual. Big old fat possum. Couple of rabbits. One of them looked pretty scroungy to tell the truth. Then a big old bobcat appeared. Out of nowhere. He must have been at least two feet tall at the shoulders. No rabbits got a chance against him. Then suddenly... Something big in front of the camera appeared. Could have been a bear, but I don't know. We have been searching the cliffside here in the wilderness. Uh, it probably goes up, I'd say, about 150 feet in height. And there's no doubt there are caves hidden in that cliffside. It is a soft-sided dirt with shale and then some heavy rock at the top. So we're going through a very heavy wilderness area where it is a lot of steep terrain. It's somewhat dangerous. The train here goes probably from 30 degrees up to almost straight up when you're trying to travel through here. Uh, it's really heavy. The brush is heavy. You have to watch out for landslides coming down because of the soft dirt. Most certainly, Bigfoot could hide here. If he could hide anywhere, he could hide here. I could put five men standing together up here and I probably could not see them in this uh, dense brush, especially with these deep trenches and gullies and the valleys and the ridges, it, you can just literally move 10, 20 feet and be past a ridge where you can't be seen. So it's not unheard of for Bigfoot to actually be able, as big as he supposedly is, for him to actually be able to live in an area like this. It's just surrounded by brush and thickets and rocks and streams. So there's not a question, can he get access to water and probably access to enough food to eat it's here i have a large bipedal creature crossing the mountain top approximately one mile away due north i'm going to try to get video of it but i don't think the lens can zoom in that well but we'll see what we can get he's Yes, he's moving east to west. Long hair, dark brown color. Sometimes as I look through the brush, I thought I would catch a brief glimpse moving among the rocks. But before I get there, he would always be gone. That cave's too small for Bigfoot, that's for sure. But keep looking.
Looks like we have another cave ahead. Better watch out for bears, that's for sure. This cave isn't deep enough for Bigfoot. It's really shallow. Here we are again down here on this creek bottom. We followed it down as far as we could go. I haven't seen any sign down here. We saw, saw some fur up on the top. We might have been scratching and cleaning himself. They get in these ponds and they'll clean themselves. They'll wash themselves off, pull the bugs off of them. All the kinds of stuff. We see a little hair up on the tree, but we didn't find nothing that really looked like it really could be a Bigfoot, but it was, didn't look like it could have been anything else. Right across from it, you can see a uh, rock slide and you'll see a dense heavy rock wall goes up about 150 feet uh, there's boulders all through here it is extremely hard to traverse and uh, as i reported earlier i actually tore the sole off one of my boots my tactical boots trying to traverse this it is so heavy and rugged out here is we just came back from a hard trek uh, doing a search and recon for Bigfoot and if you don't believe me how tough it is and how rugged it is out there uh, it tore the sole right off my combat boot tore it completely off and so it's really rugged out there it's no wonder Bigfoot could exist out there uh, when you see the conditions and how hard to travel it is and you're gonna feel like even though it's actually only about 75, 80 degrees today, you get up there and it feels like 110 with the humidity. Tough traveling. Now right here, we have a piece of ripped out canoe. This is a piece of a canoe that tried to make the rapids and uh, you see what the rapids did to it. It just totally ripped it out of the uh, canoe. It's unlikely that, that canoe made it home. Well, I and my fellow explorer have been out here two weeks. We went through one week of halfway decent weather. We went through one week of just solid rain. We got wet, we were flooded. It made tracking almost impossible and it's pretty hard in the first place. We did find a lot of evidence. We found stacked rock piles that should not be where they are. Uh, we found markings on boulders. We found trails on ridges. We found bone fragments buried in the uh, riverbed. We found teeth, as I saw them showed you, and we found some other artifacts, unusual artifacts. Does the Okla Cheeto beast or the Kimichi beast exist? A lot of people say he does. And, uh, I've heard a lot of stories of people when I come up to this area to search. I've heard a lot of people say he doesn't exist. I've been on top of the mountains and I've heard the howls and strange sounds myself. 
I keep finding more and more evidence every time I come. The Kimichi Beast, he's there. Where he goes, we don't know. We know how he travels. We know where he's traveling through. But he seems to just disappear. Could be seasonal, that he's moving through the seasons to different areas. Yes, it's very possible. Uh, I think the best time to search is actually in the spring. But we have found a lot of evidence that something is going on in the Kiyomichi Mountains. As you may know, they hold a Bigfoot Festival there in Honolulu, Oklahoma, just across the state line from where we're at. We have been over in that area searching too. And a lot of people, as I said, swear he exists. Well, this has been one tough expedition. It's time to go home. I hope you guys will join us for more of our adventures as we put them out. Maybe check out my movie, The Mountain Stalker, on Amazon.com. Uh, pretty soon we'll have another movie out called Alone with Bigfoot. That will be on Amazon.com too. Check out my adventures. Join me again for another quest. This is Master Use. Bye-bye. Yeah, I don't guess Bigfoot's gonna answer this time. Must be clean over the ridge. Huh? Eh, oh well. <laughs>